want to spend some time with all of you here talking about uh, how to get hitters out. Ultimately, you want to become better pitchers, and why you're here is to improve your technique, all the things that we've kind of discussed before. But specifically, we've kind of addressed it on a few, on a few occasions, but how do we get hitters out? That is your job. How do we get hitters out? What's our objective as a pitcher? Zach? Uh, change speeds and location. Changing speeds and locations. Yes, what else? What else can we do? Deception. Deception. Very important. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. For me, it's deception, um, if you will, tricking the batter. And I've listed here some things that I think we need some discussion on. But ultimately, a hitter, they say hitters have to be on time. Hitting is about timing and rhythm, being consistent with that and being able to repeat consistency with timing. Well, if that's so, what do you think pitching is? Pitching is trying to disrupt that timing. So here's the deal. If a hitter is off about six miles per hour, he will not be consistent. If you change speeds about eight to ten miles per hour, you're usually going to swing or miss. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, here's what that means. Some people call it effective velocity. If a pitch is being radared, at 85 miles per hour down the middle. But you throw that same pitch that's radared at 85, but now it's up and in. You add 5 miles per hour. If it's low and away, you minus 5. So in essence, that 85 miles per hour fastball that's being clocked by the radar, if you happen to throw that up to the hitter, it's perceived as 90. Low and away is perceived as 80. So that's important to know. So the miles per hour consistency, if you can get them to change six miles per hour in terms of what they perceive, the hitter perceives, the favor goes into the um, advantage goes to your favor. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Up and in, you add five. Down and away, minus five. Why is that so important? Even though I haven't done anything with pitch uh, velocity, I have done it by where I throw the pitch. That's important. That's how we get hitters out, because we want to make sure that they're not on time. You can only be on time one time. 100% of the time, you can only be, that's only one place. Well, where is that place? Well, if you look at that diagram there, there's three lanes. There's inside, middle, and outside. If I throw that pitch inside, I, to, square, <coughs> excuse me, to square it off, I'm going to hit that about a little bit in front of the plate, in front of my knee, in front of my foot. The pitch that's away from me, I'm going to let it travel and get deeper. That distance between the back of the pitch that's away and the pitch that's up front is about three feet. Do you realize how much three feet is in terms of reaction time? That's critical. That's why a lot of major leaguers stand back towards the back of the plate so they have more reaction time. Okay, three planes, what's that mean? Why is that important in terms of uh, understanding how to get hitters out? Kevin, what do you think about that? Um, what are three planes? Three different speeds, right? <clears throat> no. Three different levels? Yeah, so you've got up and down, you've got in and out, and you've got depth. Now, why is a changeup or a curveball so effective? Because it goes through three planes. Does that make any sense to you? Meaning this. It goes from a high pitch, generally, and it sinks a little more than a fastball. So it's breaking the height plane, the up and down plane. It goes from side to side because it bends, it breaks. Right? So it's breaking that plane. And also, is it faster or the same speed as a fastball? No, it slows down. So you've broken three planes. That's why a curveball and a changeup is so effective. Why is a changeup even more effective? Because it appears to be a fastball. And that's where the deception comes in. So to get hitters out, you've got to have deception. You've got to have command and location. What's command? Command is what? We've talked about this. What's command? Um, like where you want to put the ball. Yeah. What's the difference between command and location? 
That's right. It's very, very important. So I can get hitters out. I can get them not to be on time simply by command. You understand that concept? Very, very important. One of the things that I think is really important when you practice your pitching in the bullpen, off days, flat ground, whenever you pitch, take how many miles per hour off? If you can learn to take two miles per hour off your pitches, whether it be a fastball, changeup, or curveball, you have doubled your arsenal. You've doubled your toolbox kit. You've got more tools in the kit by allowing two miles per hour off your fastball or curveball or changeup. If you miss your spot and you don't have the great command, you still have taken two miles per hour off pace. In other words, you probably will fool the hitter, even if you miss your spot. If you take two miles per hour off your fastball and you hit your spot, you're in pretty good shape. Um, the next pitch, being unpredictable. I'm not going in any order here, but being unpredictable. What is meant by that? What's, me, what's, what's meant by being unpredictable? Again, our theme here is how to get hitters out. So if you're predictable, if you, are, if you have a pitching pattern, hitters are going to see that. Who calls your pitches? Do you call your pitches? Does your catcher call your pitches? Does your coach call your pitches? Coach. Uh, anybody call their own game? Those of you that have pitchers call your game. I mean, uh, those of you that have coaches call your game. Uh, do you have? Do they have a pattern, or is it random? Just random. Random. Some people pitch by patterns, and that becomes very dangerous. It becomes you become very predictable. So, being unpredictable. When should you throw your changeup? When should you throw your changeup? Whenever. Whenever you throw your fastball. Now, typically, though, there's some good times to throw that. Can you give me an example of a real good time to throw a changeup? I mean, throw a high end fastball. Then what? Then a low outside changeup. Okay. That might be a good time. How about an anxious hitter? Do you guys do you guys read body language? Reading hitters, that's part of it. Body language. Can you tell if somebody's excited to hit? The number three hitter, the number four hitter. The lumberjack. He wants to hit one a country mile. He's ready. He digs in. He wants to yank it so bad. The balls that are hit far, generally speaking, are usually balls that they pull. So can you tell if a guy's ready to hit and really wants to take one deep? Would you be able to do that? When you think back of the times when you pitched, can you think of hitters like that? You may be that hitter. Sure you can. That's the great time to throw a changeup. Another great time to throw a changeup. Runner on second. A uh, right-handed hitter's up. Should you throw that person a changeup? Could you throw that person a changeup? My next question is, runner on second, but there's a left-handed hitter up. Should you throw that guy a changeup? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Is there a difference? Think about that. Runner on second. Thank you, Warren. You're welcome. Runner on second. There's a changeup thrown to a righty and a changeup thrown to a lefty. Is there a difference? Uh, the lefty, like you don't want to throw to a lefty if there's a runner on second because if they pull it, then they're like moving the runner to third. But if you throw to a righty, when there's a runner on second, if they pull it, you could still like stop the runner from bending. Exactly. So that, there we go. There's a situation where a changeup is either good or not so good. So if you don't want to throw a changeup to a lefty because he's going to pull the ball because it's a changeup, the runner from second will advance because the ball's hit to his right side. Just the opposite would be true if a, a righty's up. Their hit ball to shortstop. They have to wait to see it go through the infield before they're going to take off the third, at least a good base runner should. So there are some different scenarios. So um, reading hitters is pretty important. Uh, the count, one and one. Why is that such an important count, you think? Well, 
me ask you a question. If you throw a ball after the one-on-one -on -one count, that makes it two and one. If you throw a strike after one-on-one -on -one count, it becomes one and two. It has been shown that a guy that's ahead in the count, a two-one count, bats close to 300. A guy that's one and two bats about a uh, buck ninety. Who would you rather face? A guy that's hitting a buck ninety or a guy hitting close to three hundred? Obvious. I'd rather face the guy that's hitting one ninety with two strikes. So the next pitch, we chart this. After one and one pitch, after one and one count, the next pitch, get a strike. Very, very important. Um, hiding the pitch. What does that mean? Hiding the pitch. How do we hide pitches? Pardon me? Throw the glove, throw the ball. I can see the ball clearly if I drop or when I have a dead front side or I pull out. I can see the ball clearly from a hitting standpoint. But if I throw the glove and throw the ball, I don't pick up the ball quite as soon. How about the guy that brings the ball behind him? I can see pitches from here. I can pick that up. The good hitters can pick that up. Am I a hooker? Um, so hiding the pitch. Oftentimes pitches give away their pitches as well. They spread out their glove, it might mean a curveball. They get their elbow out, it might mean a curveball. They play with the ball, it might mean a curveball. So there's visual cues that pitchers give away that hitters can pick up on. So we as pitchers have to be very careful of that. But also, if we can reduce the time they see the ball and get up and out, we reduce reaction time. The less reaction time of the hitter, the, the advantage goes to the pitcher. Okay, uh, arm slot release angles. What's meant by that? What do you think about that? Do you have any thoughts about that, Kev? Um, not really. Not really. Who can help? Arm slot and release angles. Well, let me ask you a question. If I constantly throw from this angle, Will that make the hitter uncomfortable? So what were you going to say, Max? It makes it unpredictable if you throw it one like after you yeah. change your release. Well, does that make sense? Sure it does. If I keep throwing from here and then every once in a while, we're in a key situation, I throw it from down here. All of a sudden, it's a different look for the hitter. That split millisecond of, whoa, what's that? Might mean the difference between a W and an L. It might mean the difference between hitting it hard and not hitting it well. Every game comes down to, I think, key critical times during a ball game where you've got to make that money pitch. It usually comes down to crunch time. One or two times in a ball game that I've got to make this pitch. I've got to get this out. And it's those moments where you might consider changing your arm slot or changing your tempo, quick pitch. How many times do you throw from the stretch? Boom. Boom. Well, how about if you do this? Don't you think it disrupts the hitter? Well, like, some guys get A-Rod out at the highest level. You know how A-Rod, he gathers to go and has that high leg lift? Well, pitchers mess with that a little bit and they speed up their tempo in their windup or from the stretch position just to offset his timing mechanism. And that's when A-Rod gets into trouble. So what I'm suggesting is, if you agree with me that one, two, or three times during the ball game there are critical moments, if you can get the hitter out in those critical moments and make your pitch, uh, chances are you'll be much more successful. So quicking your, your quick pitch or your tempo is pretty important and releasing angles are pretty important. Um, anything else in terms of how you think you can get some hitters out? So you understand the velocity thing. It's called effective velocity. I want to just come back to that real quick. Effective velocity. If I throw a fastball down the middle at 85 miles per hour, the next pitch I throw a slider or a cutter, but that slider, which is registered by the radar gun, at 78 but I happen to throw that slider up and in. What is that pitch to the hitter? Plus 5. 78 plus 5 is what? 83. So if I throw that 85 mile per hour fastball right down the middle, the next pitch I throw a slider at 78 by the gun, but to the hitter it's like 83. 
Is that a hittable pitch? It sure is, because there's only a difference of two. I'm suggesting that if there's a difference of six, he won't be on time. If there's a difference of eight to ten, he'll probably swing and miss. If I throw that same cutter at 78 miles per hour on the register on the gun, but I throw it low and away, what is that? 78 minus 5 is 73. I throw my 85 down the middle, and I throw my cutter away at 73, as seen by the hitter. That's a spread of what? 85 and 73 is a spread of what, 12? Is that, is that more than 6 or 8? Is the hitter likely to hit that? No. Not hard. Not consistently. So that's why I'm saying the next pitch is crucial in terms of effective velocity. Very, very important. Any questions? Are we trying to hit the bat? Yes. Yes, we are. If the ball is near the hands, are they early or late? Early. If they early. Agree? If they hit it off the end of the bat, are they early or late? Late. No, just the opposite. If you get jammed, are you early or late? You're late. If you, uh, usually, if it's at the end of the bat, you roll over, you're usually early, and you hit little dribblers. So read that from a hitter. Can you get away with throwing your fastball? Should you throw a change up to a, should you throw your two mile per hour difference fastball to a hitter that you know can't? handle the fastball? I don't think so. How about if you know if a hitter can't hit a curveball? Should you throw a curveball? If, you're, if the curveball is not, you're not throwing it for strikes that day? No, yes? No. Why? You can't get them out. I mean, you're not going to swing it if it's in the dirt. Okay. So always remember this as a pitcher. Go with your strength. Even though the situation or the hitter calls for a curveball, and you don't have it that day, go with your strength and just be able to command. So that's an important thing, too. So those are just some things about how to get hitters out. Deception and timing are key. If you understand that, you will get hitters out. All right? Okay. What I'd like to do...